Hello programmers, developers, technologists, and the like. Welcome to another episode on Developing with Action Jake. Today I have another very special guest for you, Elise Canali, one of the previous owners of the Code Ninjas Tanglewood branch. Code Ninjas is an organization dedicated to teaching kids how to code and help them learn all things tech. I was fortunate enough to be able to volunteer at the branch that Elise owned, where I was also able to become one of her mentees. In this conversation, we talk about why kids love Roblox and Minecraft so much, why teaching kids how to build games is one of the most effective teaching tools, and why Code Ninjas is such an amazing organization. I hope you enjoy this talk on developing with Action Jake. We are live with Elise Canali, the previous owner of the Code Ninjas Tanglewood branch and one of my old mentors. Very happy to have you on the show. Thanks for being with us. Oh, thank you, Jacob. I wanted to jump in with the first question right here. Okay. So I do want to hear about your background. I yep. know you and your husband, Edmund, are entrepreneurs. Can you tell us about your career and what led you to investing in Code Ninjas? Sure. So I, um, well, first of all, to back it up, I've married almost 25 years and we have four children. Our oldest is 21 and then 19, 16, and a six-year-old. So um, my career was at GSDM, GSDNM advertising in Austin and then BMC software here in Houston mm -hmm. a few years. And then I became a stay at home mom and became a professional volunteer. And so my, I spent about, uh, I would say 30 plus hours a week as a busy bee inside of my children's schools which led me to get a look under the hood of what's actually happening in education. Mm -hmm. And so I became a very passionate advocate for rigor in the classroom mm -hmm. because I see there was enough of that happening in my own daughter's classrooms at our nearby public school. And so I knew for certain it wasn't happening in a lot of schools. And, um, and ultimately was involved at the district level, always, never as an employee, always as a critic, advocate for children. And so fast forward, so that went on for a number of years and I occasionally spoke at the national level. And then my children, ultimately, we pulled them out of public school, put them in private school, and I kind of was on a hiatus for a bit. Then my husband heard about this new franchise that had just started in Pearland, Texas, which is only about 25 minutes from Houston. Mm -hmm. And so he called me and he said, at least this sounds right up your alley. And I, at the time, we at the time had an 18 month old, our fourth child. And, um, so I wasn't really looking to, uh, jump back in the work world immediately, but he, he and I didn't even know where Pearland was to be perfectly honest. Mm -hmm. I heard of it, never, never been there. And so ultimately he convinced me to go down and when I heard the original founder, David Graham, speak about what he was building, which was an opportunity for kids to learn how to code, how to be in an environment immersed in technology to become producers of it versus just users of it, mm -hmm. I, I was totally hooked because I wish I'd had that for my own children when they were younger. So um, we jumped in with both feet and... Um, opened two locations at the same time, one in Pearland mm -hmm. and one in Houston, Texas, right in the middle of our neighborhoods, which you and I live so close to. Mm -hmm. And so, um, it was, it was a, it was a roller coaster of all sorts. And for, we can dive into that as you want, but, mm -hmm. um, I, 
I, we were from beginning to end, it was almost five years. And through that lost one, because it just, it just didn't perform. The other one succeeded handsomely. Um, but learned tremendous. I really got an MBA on the job Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and, um, and I loved working with the children and, and being involved in a category of which I knew wasn't still, which is still just absent at school. Mm -hmm. As you know, and I know is so critical to the future. So that's, I I think that's answered in a nutshell. Yeah. Yeah. Code ninjas is filling that void that public schools currently um, don't have an answer for, right? We we were doing our best. Mm -hmm. We were doing our best. So, I, you know, we're talking about Code Ninjas. I do want to take a step back. Can you tell us a little bit more, like, what is Code Ninjas for the listeners? Uh, It's a franchise that started in a suburb outside of Houston. And the intention is to give kids the opportunity to learn you know, a skill set that is often reserved for late high school and typically college. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, when in fact, kids are so smart, they can absorb this and they can take it and run with it at such an early age. Whether they're starting with Code Spark, which is a basic a visual based programming language tool, to graduate then to Scratch, which is object based, it still doesn't require a tremendous amount of reading. However, the you know strategy and the game building and it can get very sophisticated um you know and from there you can move into python Mm -hmm. you know in the fifth grade Mm -hmm. i had sixth grade girls who were just could run circles around any collegiate in python um it was also i I was really uh, motivated to be part of this because i have three daughters and i just knew that STEM for girls mm-hmm. is is such a ticket to it. Need opportunities. Mm-hmm. Totally. I mean, for everyone, but yes, we need more women in the workforce for sure in in STEM in the STEM field. Um, right. Right. Well, I, I had this question written down later, but I think it's a good transition. You know, I want to know why it is that teaching kids game development is such an effective learning tool what 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 do you think about that you know i love about it well number one is i i didn't grow up loving to read Mm -hmm. and i didn't appreciate it till i was an adult Mm -hmm. and so for my own children reading is a core concept in our house i mean core value in our house and always has been and thank the lord they are voracious leaders or readers but um that's not common anymore And so I, um, you know, I feel like with game development and coding, you're giving kids an opportunity to be very intellectually creative, mm-hmm. curious, and also teach them how to problem solve because they're so accustomed to instant gratification with Googling something, mm. you know, or it's just, you know, you can find it on via your TV remote in two seconds, whatever movie you want to watch in the whole world is right there. Sure. You know, with, with game development coding, sometimes it doesn't work Mm -hmm. and you've got to figure out why. And so I think it teaches patience and perseverance and tenacity. Um, that is not, and, and it doesn't necessarily have a recipe. You can get to the same result, lots of different ways. Whereas in school, I think we're so often just expecting kids to regurgitate and use the recipe to succeed on the test or, you know, to figure out the answer without a whole lot of thought involved. Totally. So I honestly liked it when I saw kids get frustrated. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, And especially if they then figured out Per, the reason they were frustrated and maybe it was because they had one of my team sitting there next to them very uh, gently and patiently walking them through okay let's look at this <laughs> in line by line by line or if it's scratch you know the object oriented sequence but it, it, it was just I, I just enjoyed seeing the problem solving happening mm-hmm. And maybe they did that via robotics or mm-hmm. maybe, um, 
playing Minecraft. Mm -hmm. I love Minecraft. I just think that is the most fantastic um, way to trick kids into learning. No, it's so cool. It's so cool. Um, and, and frustration is a big part of learning. So it's like you say, you don't want them to have just the, the quick dopamine hit of here's Google giving you a answer on a silver platter. You don't need to do any critical thinking to get there. And now we have stuff like chat GPT. I was just about to say now chat GPT is really eliminating the frustration because they'll do it all for you. Yeah. But I mean, things will change you know i i do think we're elevating as a species and, and ai is going to help us there um yeah but but just to talk a little bit more about code ninjas before i go off topic there you know walking in there was some of the coolest stuff like seeing i would see some of the coolest things you would have kids building robots you'd have kids playing minecraft and roblox you would have kids doing 3d modeling 3d printing um all these things and it's like if i had this when i was that age i mean that would be my my heaven you know yeah. um oh, Jacob, i mean the number of kids that would walk in and their parents would very you know sheepishly and kind of whisper to me ah, he's not very sporty <laughs> you know and i'd say guess what he just found his team <laughs> this is his club yeah we got it we got it because I, I mean, I, and you know, the other beautiful thing about what we did is if you had uh, a learning difference, that was, we could really almost eliminate all those symptoms when you walked in the door. Mm. And so kids finally, my whole goal was let kids be kids, mm -hmm. give them a place to be authentic. And so um, give them choices because everybody learns differently. Some are tactile and they, all they want to do is build with the blocks and they ultimately become the robotics gurus and others. They truly, they, they want to sit and they want to build with remodeling software or, uh, you know, on a Python, uh, uh, IED. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, whatever, what, what, you know, um, JavaScript platform, whatever it was, I just, I just wanted kids to find what sparked them to be excited. Cause I, I, I think we sadly have a gift for sucking joy out of school. Mm. Yeah. Learning is fun. It should be fun. Mm -hmm. And, and I didn't learn that until I was like exiting college. Yeah, you know, and I think most parents, a lot of parents, they don't get that until they're a little older. Mm -hmm. when, my oldest, when, when she was in kindergarten, I remember picking her up from school one day and I said, you know, in my minivan all those years ago, what'd you do today? Played. And I almost slammed on the brakes. Played? What do you mean you're playing? You're supposed to be learning the whole day. <laughs> and now I'm like, oh my gosh, what a jerk I was. Mm. Such a jerk. So lucky for my kindergarten now. I'm like, oh, play your heart out. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, I, I saw a quote somewhere where it was like, play is the highest form of research yeah. or something, something to that tune. Um, well, that, that's yeah. just so cool. I, I like to use the theme based on a book of a professor up in um, Boston. And the title of her book is Coding is a Playground. Mm -hmm. And so I would tell people, you know what? This is a playground. There are lots of different play ways to Be productive but most of all let's trick them into the learning mm. mm -hmm. let's trick them so they think they're just playing because when you think you're just playing that's when you enjoy what you're doing i mean it's so true i mean you give them minecraft and roblox and it's like yeah this is school right um I mean, minecraft I mean, microsoft is so smart now they've got minecraft education so you can learn to code inside Minecraft. And, you know, it's like, are you, that is so fun. It's so fun. It's so cool. It's so productive. So occasionally I would have a parent come in and tell me, I don't want my child playing any video games. <laughs> okay. And they leave and then we get the video games out. It's like, well, they're not video games. They're video. Yeah, no, 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 no. 
yeah development we're okay <laughs> fine fine but the, the whole point is to learn how to develop through play yeah exactly their video lessons that you just yeah, happen so to be good. playing through again yeah as you build you know i have this question written down and it's it's yeah. a little obvious but i am curious from your perspective what is it about games like Roblox and Minecraft that are so appealing to kids? Like what, why are kids so drawn to those types of games? Well, I'll tell you, I, I am, for instance, during the shutdown, mm -hmm. you know, we thought it was going to be maybe a two week deal. And, um, fortunately my husband was a little, had a little more wisdom than that in foresight. And he had us get, he's had us start getting ready for the shutdown at, beginning mid February, the latest. Mm. So we, um, you know, our initial thought was, well, we'll just offer Minecraft online because mm. we can proctor that with our team. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so, you know, as a carrot to get people to continue with us, in addition to the, we became kind of a pseudo school. We had about probably 20, 25 classes going on a week through that entire spring online um, and all sorts of subjects. And then every Friday, we had a Minecraft based defense class. Mm. It wasn't a class, it was more like a clubhouse yeah. online. And there would be, like a, it was so cool. Like there would be, 15, it was always boys because the girls just weren't as advanced enough to play. The girls were in the beginner Minecraft classes earlier in the week. Um, but the boys, they would play base defense every single Friday at 4 p.m. There would be 15 guys on there and they, you know, it, they would, there were teams and it's just listening to that. It sometimes it almost like get teary because the boy who would come to our center every week who was so quiet and never talked, all of a sudden you put him online in Minecraft and he becomes the patrol <laughs> you know, leader. <laughs> he's the one telling everybody what to do. And he's like just amazing. And um, and so you saw people come out of their shell and, you know, they had to work together in order to defeat the Ender Dragon. And, I mean, there was yelling and screaming going on. I mean, it was built community. Mm-hmm. An environment that was safe because my team, we had private servers set up. So there were no creepy people from the internet mm -hmm. who were all of a sudden adding into our games. Parents could trust my child is totally safe right now. Mm -hmm. and, and they were connecting with kids and making friends with boys they'd never know. Mm -hmm. Who maybe lived in West U instead of Memorial uh, Tanglewood or in Bel Air. And all of a sudden, they've got these friends that they're playing offline with when they're not with us. I, I just think, um, I can't remember what the point of your, what I love about Minecraft. Uh, why are those games so appealing to kids? Oh, oh they're so appealing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's what I think is super appealing about Minecraft. Plus I think, you know, it, Minecraft allows you to think like an architect, mm -hmm. play Legos in 3d. Mm -hmm. And what, what, Boy, didn't love Legos. Well, that that's what I was going to bring up is I was obsessed with Legos as a kid. My we, son is obsessed with Legos. Guy, oh my gosh, yeah. And um, so, and then Roblox, Roblox is a little more, um, has has some thorns in it because of all the, the chat and mm -hmm. kind of creepy people that um, flock there, but you know, in the right setting, Roblox can be very cool and you can learn to code in Lua and you can build some really incredible games in Ro Roblox that you could, you know, if they hit the right target, it could be the next jailbreak. And you're, you know, that, that guy, I think he was in high school when he built that game and went on to make millions of dollars and fund his way through Duke. Um, so, you know, it's just, I, 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 it was really interesting. Girls love Roblox. Hmm. And I love to see girls learning to code inside Roblox and build their own games. So again, it's just, but a lot of, you know, but either of those games, they need to be used in some um, measure because they can 
be addictive and you can go down rabbit holes that are not uh, child proof. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, there, it, there needs to be some parental supervision, supervision or uh, boundary set so that uh, nobody falls in a dangerous spot. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's important. And I think that's where like parents have a lot of concerns when it comes to allowing their kids to play online games. Yeah. Um, which that is a valid concern, no doubt. But sometimes the concern is just they're going to be staring at a screen all day and yeah. they're not going to have a social life and they're not going to be, you know, learning. They're not going to be wanting to engage with their, you know, academic classes and whatnot. I, yeah. I am curious because, you know, you and I resonate on this front. I'm curious, what, what would your message be to some parents that, kind of shy away from allowing their kids to play video games, just play I, I video would, games. Yeah. I, I would say, don't be like me, <laughs> you know, 18 years ago, mm -hmm. 15 years ago, because, um, we, we, you know, you can pretend like you live on a Indian reservation and you're protected from all that forever, but that's not the case. And kids are going to find a way to access I, I, with my daughters, I was super anti-tech, which is why all my friends were shocked when I told them I was starting a business to teach, you know, <laughs> technology. But um, I, I finally came around to the realization that I would prefer my daughters to, at a minimum, know enough to discern what's real and not, and what is not real. Mm -hmm. It was the world that's coming ahead of us. And, um, and, you know, when my daughters were growing up, they didn't, there were no iPads and iPhones. So that mm -hmm. wasn't an issue. Um, but I, I would say, you know, you, I, my own son who's kindergarten, he has zero access to technology at home. He gets to go to code ninjas every Thursday for a, an hour. And I tell parents all the time, use me as their technology mm -hmm. time. Use me. Then, you know, it's safe. Their boundaries, they're there for an hour and then you pick them up and you say, okay, we're going to ride our bikes now. Mm, love that. You're not at home pulling them away from the computer. And I, this, you know, might wrinkle some, uh, ruffle, but I, I don't give your child an iPad. I was literally just about to bring that up because uh, it just pains me. Cause that is how screen addiction starts. And mm. it's, it's just, it's so, it's just like crack cocaine. I mean, I've never done crack cocaine, but I'm guessing <laughs> that, that addiction, I mean, it, we, mm. we saw it all the time. And if you want to turn your kiddo into, a, you know, isolated, mm. then give him an iPad or an iPhone at a young age. You'll never talk to him again. Yeah. It's like the modern day pacifier. I mean, I, I, you know, don't, don't also don't do a zero tech plan. Mm -hmm. Let them have access in some form or fashion, whether it's an hour at, someplace outside of school or an hour at your home that you monitor, but don't give them, don't use that thing as a babysitter. Well, I think that's the problem is it's such an effective babysitter. People it's, it's such a great babysitter. So, you know, what do you like? How do you tell a parent? Yeah. I know you want that hour to you or two to yourself right now, but oh, yeah. you're, you're causing damage handing your child that iPad. <laughs> Well, the fir first would be not to, if you don't ever give them the iPad mm. and instead you give them a drawing pad. Mm. Like one and of then, those like electric ones or like a just pen no, and paper? No, paper. Okay. Paper and coloring pencils and let them just draw. Okay. Don't give them an iPad. Give them a drawing pad. And maybe it, it, do y'all, do, you, do you, you and Edmund use uh, iPads in the house? I know. So you just don't have, that's just not something that's in the household. Not iPads. We all have our own. I mean, Edmund's guy's the only one without a computer. Everybody else has a laptop. Or right. A but that's for work. IPad. It's not like you're on yeah, that yeah. all the time. No, no, no. And I still get the old fashioned newspaper every day. Okay. I, and I read real books. I don't use a Kindle. But um, anyway, it, that's just works for me. Um, but you know, it also not having those means I don't have to fight with him about it because mm -hmm. he wouldn't want to be on it. Mm. 
Oh my gosh. Speaking I'm of kind of out of sight, out of mind. Right. No, it, it makes it makes a lot of sense. Um speaking of books, I actually did want to bring this up and I didn't mention this to you, so this is out of left field. Okay, um, tell me. Remember that book Reality Unbroken? Oh, you know, I never read it. Oh, you never read it? Oh my gosh. I, 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 no, I wish I had. I okay. guess I have it still. Yeah, I did got the I got the audiobook after your uh, recommendation. Oh. Or maybe you didn't recommend it. You just had it sitting I on your desk. I had it on the desk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, this is interesting. But yeah, she talks about how game creators, game developers are going to be the ones creating the future and we need to be engendering kids to. Oh, I believe in that. Oh, mm -hmm. So I, that was what I didn't answer in a previous question is mm -hmm. I wish now my daughter is 21 and I'm, you know, I'm just crushed that she does not know how to play video games. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and I, you know, I, now I tell her guy friends, will you please teach me me how to play video games? Because I think there's so much strategy that uh, is also applicable to the business world and that, you know, honestly spurs entrepreneurship. And so, um, I'm, I'm crushed that she doesn't, that my daughters don't know how to play video games. But honestly, when I loved hiring the high school girls who walked in and said, I love Minecraft. Mm. You're hired. <laughs> and you're a total rock star. That's all you need to hear. Oh my gosh. I love those girls. Plus they're unicorns. They're not a whole mm -hmm, lot of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and and it, there'll be more going into the future because oh, so many little girls love Roblox especially. But I just think, I think so much of the future business is gamified mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and all the data science involved everything i i just i think that video game development is rock solid awesome yeah it's, it's all about making things fun so gamifying yeah. um all we want to do is play games it doesn't necessarily matter if they're video games sports right or otherwise it's like yeah. what we want to do as a as a species is play even as we grow right. up so video games are great for that because I have another book called, oh, wow, I'm going to forget the name of it, but I think it's called The Art of Game Development or The Art of Game Design. Uh -huh. And um, he talks about how, you know, games in general, you know, have evolved. And until we came across the video game medium, uh -huh. he talks about it being the best medium for creating a game. I mean, uh -huh. it's pretty obvious why, but. That's only happened within the last, what, several decades. Uh -huh. um, so there's well, a little girl for me, you know, back in the 80s, mm -hmm. we had Atari. Yeah, yes. Pac-Man and, mm -hmm. and Frogger and some, and you know, had the big cartridge that you stuck in the machine um, and a joystick, I think. I can't even remember now, but... Um, and that was, I mean, I don't know why I didn't let my daughters play video games because I thought that was so fun now that I think about mm, it. That's <laughs> so awful. Hey, no, I mean, but now, hey, you know, you've learned. And there's not many mothers in the world that are saying, wow, I wish my 21-year-old daughter plays video games, you know? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> so but I it's, do. It's the total opposite. But, but to that point, yeah, there's tons of research that suggests playing video games is really good for your brain. It's like brain training. It prevents yeah. Alzheimer's. There's research to suggest that. Um, just like something like, I think I read 14 to 21 hours is the sweet spot. Mm -hmm. And if you're not much of a gamer, games like Tetris is like mm -hmm. a really good game because it's like, you know, okay. real-time puzzle solving. Well, and you know what, Jacob, mm -hmm. I love too about... Um... Oh my gosh, I'm talking about this business like I still own it. I don't, it's but okay. um, I, um, you know, for little kids, mm -hmm. like my son, four or five, six year olds, what I love about teaching uh, gaming on the computer, on the laptop, I did not use tablets at the center except for parties. Mm -hmm. um, but, because I don't want kids on the tablet, mm. but, um, uh, you know, because when they have to use a mouse mm -hmm. and their fingers on the keyboard, that takes a tremendous amount of concentration. Mm -hmm. Everybody assumes that that's just a skill you come out of the womb with. No, 
you have, I mean, it takes so much for their little hands to fit on the mouse <laughs> and learn the right click, left click, mm. the roller button, and then ultimately to start learning how to type because schools don't teach typing anymore. Right. Yeah. So, so I, my, my, you know, I, we were connect, we're making brain connections between the hands and their head that otherwise they weren't going to be those little fine motor skills mm -hmm. uh, weren't being exercised. Yeah, it's sad schools aren't teaching typing skills anymore. I remember learning that back in the day. Yep. Um, and to this day, you know, I'm on a keyboard every day, but yep. I don't have perfect technique. Um, right. But I'm still, I'm, I'm decent. And I, I think I, I have to attribute a lot of that to one school, but two yep. pl playing like um, MMOs, like World of Warcraft back in the day. And you have to learn how to type fast because you're mid battle yep. and you're like, come yep. over here, I'm dying. <laughs> right, 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 right. So anyway, the, those soft skill or mm -hmm. I guess maybe they're hard skills, but it, it's really cool to see little kids mm -hmm. pick that up. Totally. Totally. Well, you mentioned it being a a previous business. So I yeah. am curious about Code Ninjas. Can you <laughs> if you know, if you're comfortable answering this question, um, yeah. can you tell us about the exit and what opportunity presented itself that was just too good to pass up? Um, well, we decided my, well, we, we decided back in September that we didn't know how long it would take to sell, mm -hmm. um, if it would sell and, um, our lease was going to come up for renewal, le renewal later this year. Mm -hmm. Um, and retail space in Houston does not get cheaper. Especially in that business. area. Yeah, especially in our area. Mm -hmm. And then um, franchise agreement needed to be renewed, blah, 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 blah. And um, I, me, um, I don't do anything halfway. And so mm -hmm. I um, needed to spend more time with my children, mm -hmm, especially mm -hmm. my kindergartner, mm -hmm. you know, teaching how to read and ride a bike and I need to teach my 16 year old how to drive this summer. We, she'll be 17. So, and um, things like that. So we decided to put her on the market and, um, fortunately somebody came along mid fall who, uh, that is pretty close to where we wanted to exit. And, uh, so we decided, okay, here we go. But it was oh, honestly, I, it, I felt like I was giving away a child. Mm. I, you know, I, I loved, I loved my students and their families. And I, a number of them, I, you know, I've now traveled with, they're like great friends and I feel like their kids are my kids. Um, but at the same time, there were things going on behind the scenes related to the main business that made mm -hmm. it very stressful. Mm -hmm. And we had weathered the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And during the shutdown, you know, while all my friends were like cozied up on the couch with their kids watching movies and going to the park, I was working my tail off mm. to um, build a business in the cloud. And so it happened, but I never had a break. Mm. So I'm just, I'm calling this spring my COVID break. Yeah. And so I've really enjoyed, um, free time. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, I mean, when you're, when you're in a business that deals with children, you never stop worrying. Mm. If you're not there, then you're worried. Then you just, they're on your mind and you're just a little bit worried until you know, the lights are off and the doors locked uh, because you feel like they're your children too. And you feel responsible. So um Anyway, so it's I, I'm super grateful for the opportunity and for the friendships and the relationships that happen and for the learning that I saw transpire. And I think that we changed the trajectory of a number of little lives mm -hmm. who never would have considered themselves technologists uh, in one form or fashion, and and they've now met that side of them. Um, and so I'm really, and, and also, you know, Jacob, I loved 
coaching and mentoring young people that mm-hmm. worked for me. Mm-hmm. That was a tremendous gift. I mean, all of you guys, y'all were such a gift to me. Mm-hmm. So I miss that mm-hmm. a lot. Um, and I'm so thankful. I mean, I'm just, I feel like I'm forever going to be part of the lives of so many of the young people who are on my team over the course of those years. And, you know, and as a result, we were all in it together. Mm-hmm. And so, um, but I, you know, it's, so it was hard for me to outsource the management of what we did because I like to be so involved. Mm-hmm. So it was either all or nothing. So yeah. the, you know, the new, the buyer, he kept asking, well, he asked me, why, why are you selling? And mm-hmm. I finally, I said, I'm just tired. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's all. Yeah. So, um, anyway, and, 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 you know, I'm excited to see what experience and the skills gained will parlay into the future. Totally. Yeah. I'm excited for your next venture. Um, Thank you. which we'll, we'll get into that in a little bit, but, um, I'm curious. Uh, so you, you, do you believe, does your intuition tell you code ninjas Tanglewood is in, in good hands moving forward? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's in great, great hands. I'm so, I, I, the new ownership, we, we speak on a regular basis. It's okay. a total win, win, cool. Win, win. You, you wouldn't have sold it to just anybody. Mm, for the right price, we would have sold it to anybody. Um, <laughs> and so it was a win-win Perfect. for sure. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. For sure. Awesome. Well, cool. Well, um, I, you know, I, I, I wanted to bring up crypto a little bit. <laughs> I, 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 I'm because I, you and Edmund were some of the first are like always be buying and, um, <laughs> You know, crypto is like all over the place and really, I just want to hear your thoughts. Are y'all, are y'all still on the same page? Cause I know we've, we've seen a lot of ups and down lately. Um, or have y'all changed, I shifted know. gears lately? Yeah. I, um, I saw that question on your list. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, I guess it was 2021 February of that year when I became introduced the whole idea of it mm-hmm. and really fell in love with everything. I well, first of all, just to be free, we're just big, we're Bitcoin maxis. We don't okay. uh, participate in anything else, but um, I just really felt convicted by the ethos behind Bitcoin. And um, I, so I spent 2021 like way down the rabbit hole. Okay. I was obsessed. I think that and, was the year we talked about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, so since, and then since then I've been, you know, distracted and lots of other stuff going down and, and I, I mean, I never, we never got into it as a get rich quick, mm-hmm, always mm-hmm. a long-term play. And, you know, um, so it's been certainly been a roller coaster, but I don't, I mean, I, I still believe in what it stands for and totally. I, and I cringe at the, massive printing of money and manipulation of markets by um, the Federal Reserve and central banks, et cetera. And so, mm. um, you know, I, I don't, I mean, I question myself. I even during that time, I kept questioning, am I joining a cult? Um, <laughs> but I, I think, in the, yeah, a little bit. Um, but I, I, I tell you what, it was really the first time I've ever paid attention and loved the world of economics. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I never could have told you that before what was Austrian economics versus Keynesian, and all that, you know, I learned so much. And, um, so I, you know, I, I think that it's an opportunity for people who are unbanked to be banked mm-hmm. the first time. And so that's really social justice. And, um, so there's, there's a tremendous amount that I think is still ahead. You know, when I was in college, there was no such thing as the internet. We didn't even have email. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just, Dell had just started to take off with, you know, laptops. So I, 
I think it's naive to think that our money system will never change. Well, totally. I mean, we've got, have you seen the, in the news fed now is rolling out this summer? No. What is that? That's, um, as far as I understand it, it's the, uh, the decentralized, uh, coin that the federal reserve is going to start using. Really? Yeah. And I have no, we I, we have no idea what the implications of that are going to be. Um, Interesting. but I know they use stuff like that in other countries. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll have to see. And, but I, I think at the end of the day, I, I'm, I, I resonate with you around the ethos of crypto and the decentralization aspect of it. Um, and yeah. it gives power back to the individual and that power is undeniable because all you need is a wallet ID. You don't need right. information. You don't need IDs. You don't need a social security number. All you need is a wallet number or wallet ID. And that can change. You can open up a new wallet and, um, and people need to have that power. People need to have that power over, um, corporations and governments because they've taken advantage of the individual for a long time. Um, I'm a huge, do you know who Jack Maulers is? I know. He always wears a hoodie. Okay. I'll have to look him up. I'm a big fan of his and he has a company called strike. And it's, you know, um, it's on, you know, um, oh gosh, I've just blanked out. You know, it's, um, the Bitcoin rails for, uh, passage of money. Oh my gosh. Lightning network. Okay. Anyway, you know, it, and so cool. I mean, what they're doing so that you don't have to, you know, people who live in Houston and they're sending money to El Salvador don't have to use Western Union anymore mm-hmm. and paying about a 30 or 40 percent uh, service fee. Right. So instead of the $10 that they just earn to send home, they only get to send home six via Western Union compared to Strike. And there's, it's, you send all $10 home because it's on the Bitcoin Lightning Network. I mean, a lightning network is so amazing, but yeah, you know, it's, it'll be a long haul because all the lobbyists for credit card companies and, um, you know, those, uh, companies like Western union, they're, they're Mm there's the banking industry, their whole goal is to squash. Mm -hmm. So it's a long-term play, but, um, I'm, I'm excited to, as my young friends say, Look, Miss Canali's woke to Bitcoin um, a few years ago. So it, it's fun. And I meet really incredible people who are mm-hmm. so brilliant. And so it's been it's been a really, it's been a cool ride. Are, are you still going to Austin for those crypto cons? And no, meetups? I haven't been in a long time. I haven't been probably since maybe a year ago. Okay. Um, just because I've been, you know, having a kindergartner, it, it limits your free time. Totally. Especially out of town. Totally. Well, I had one more question for you. I did want to know what's next for the Canali team. Canali. <laughs> I said that right. I know. That's such a good question. I don't, Jacob, I'm working on it. I decided mm-hmm. this spring I was just going to unplug. And so, but mm-hmm. by fall, I'm going to update my LinkedIn. I don't mm-hmm. think I've ever used LinkedIn. I think there's just my picture and something generic on there. And so I'm going to use, I'm going to get that updated here in the next month or so. And I don't know, I can't decide if I want to go back into some sort of education space or not, not, not competing against code ninjas, but I'm talking about education in general, education reform or, or I really, you know, I love, fashion. I think, I, mean, I don't know. I, I don't know, but I'm going to figure that out, um, here pretty soon because I love to work and I love to be engaged with mm-hmm. people of all sorts. And, um, so, but it's been not, I've gotten all the light bulbs changed that haven't worked <laughs> in a while and played up all the closets. So I'm, I'm getting all my ducks in a row. Yeah. Um, so I just have to, I mean, it's like, at least I don't know. It's just, again, it's hard for me to do anything halfway. Mm-hmm. So that's why I'm uh, going slowly. 
Totally. But eventually you're going to run out of ducks to put in a row. <laughs> I know. I'm running out. I am running out, truthfully. So um, anyway, but it's good. And I just want to tell you, I this is such an honor to talk to you oh, well, in thank this you. format. And I'm so, I just think what you're doing is so amazing. And your journey is so cool. And what you're sharing with people of all with all your different subjects each week is awesome. Oh, well, thank you so much. I'm honored to have you on. I think it's really cool to see one of my one of my favorite mentors. Oh my gosh. What, which that never came up, but my goodness, you you came to me at a time. I Code Ninjas was such a a great place for me to volunteer my time. Uh, especially that time in my life is a difficult time. So um Jacob, mm-hmm. like I told told you with a few other people who've worked for me, and we've is um, you, I got from you everything I gave you. You know, mm. you by you being there, I got to go home and spend the afternoon with my son who is less than two years old. Mm-hmm. And don't worry, I mean, what you gave me, you gave me time. Mm. my family um and so you know you gave me my life back for that short period it just was i hope i gave you life Mm. and so and i can't tell you how many times that theme is played over and over again with um young people on my team and Mm. it's just been amazing i I mean i just it's so beautiful i'm Mm. so thankful Mm. No, that's something God has been reminding me a lot lately is you really have to give to receive Um, Uh because we're we're really all one, right? At least that's how I see it. And um, well, that's beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that. Oh my gosh. And thank you so much for your time. It's really, it really is an honor to have you. I'm excited to see what's next. Well, we will forever be connected. So yes, heck yes. Stay tuned. Awesome. Well, hey, thanks everyone for watching. We'll catch you on the next one. All right. Bye. See ya.